Hey guys, Jeremy on the One Wildcrafter channel and today I'm just going to show you a quick video on how to render your own bear fat at home. All you really need to render your bear fat is a slow cooker or another heavy pot, a sharp knife, and your bear fat. And a cutting board I guess. Um, so I did not get a bear yet this year, um, but I was given some nice bear fat uh, by Matt Hawthorne at Fast Track Kennels. He does a lot of hunting in the uh, province of Ontario and has a really great team of dogs. And um, he gifted us this fat. And the first uh, real tip to rendering your own bear fat is to use nice clean fat. And fortunately for me, Matt uh, is a very clean butcher and took good care of this fat. There's only a few little bits of leaves and seeds on this and the odd bear hair, which I pull off immediately. So when I'm rendering bear fat, what I like to do is chill it so that it's relatively solid. This makes it a lot easier to cut. Um, you can also do this actually with a pair of heavy sharp uh, shears, kitchen shears or scissors, but I usually do it with a knife. And I like to cut my bear fat down into smaller cubes. This just helps it to render a little bit faster and also leaves you with really fabulous uh, cracklings at the end. I don't worry about uh, any meat that's left on the fat, that'll render out. And I just throw this into my slow cooker. I did need to add a little bit of water. So let's do that right now. Add a little bit of water so that our fat doesn't stick to the bottom of the slow cooker. And all that water is going to evaporate out later anyway. There won't be any water left in our finished product. So I'm going to turn this right to high and let it get hot. And then I'm going to finish it at the low setting. Um, the trick with the bare fat is that the longer you render it at the lower temperature, the better your fat's going to be. You want it to be hot enough that you evaporate all the water out of it, but you don't want it to be so hot that you burn any of the fat. Um, and more importantly, because the fat will not burn until a very high temperature, you don't want to burn any of the meat bits that are still attached to the fat. So we're going to throw this all in here and throughout the day, we're going to check on it periodically and pieces like this that have a chunk of meat on it, we're going to skim those out early on and eat them and we'll let the pure fat pieces continue to render and I should be able to get all of this slab of fat cut down and fit it into that slow cooker. If this is your first time rendering fat maybe don't commit all of your fat to one rendering batch the way that I am um, in case you mess it up. What you can do is do a smaller batch in a smaller pot and keep a closer eye on it until you're confident about uh, being able to do it without burning it. And what you do in the meantime with all your other fat is you can clean it all up and then just bag it and throw it in your freezer. Should keep for a really long time in your freezer like that. And then when you're ready to render more of it, just take it out. Um, and you could probably cut it up frozen or just thaw it out enough that it's uh, easy to cut. You don't have to thaw it out to room temperature by any means because it gets quite greasy and, and hard to handle. And then uh, finish, finish your rendering. So I like to uh, use bare fat in cooking mostly. I uh, sometimes will deep fry in it or I'll substitute it for... Um, anywhere that you might use butter or other oils. So um, my big project this year, which is 2019, is the big wild year. And my girlfriend Delphine and I are only eating wild foods for the whole of 2019. So that means that bear fat uh, and also raccoon fat have been a pretty major part of our diet this year. And we use it in any way that we would have used olive oil, butter, or other cooking oils previously. So we use it in frying pans to uh, fry food. We pour it um, on top of roast dishes to uh, 
keep them moist and fat. And we've also used it for seasoning our cast iron pans. And uh, as the main fat in um, cakes that we make using all wild food. There are also different utilitarian purposes. So people will use um, the fat for conditioning leather goods. And um, bear fat is also uh, considered to be uh, fairly medicinal and people use it uh, externally and internally um, for skin conditions, I believe. But I'm sure if you want to know more about that, you can search the web and get a little more information. We basically just use it for cooking. And right now it is uh, October the 11th. So we are more than three quarters of the way through our big wild year. And we've eaten the fat from uh, approximately three bears worth of fat this year alone. Um, and that hasn't even made up all of our fat use. Uh, we've also been using quite a bit of raccoon fat. That's our second fat source. And I rendered the fat from one fat groundhog, which was probably made up the third largest supply of fat for us in this year from, uh, from animals. Our other major sources of fat would be uh, probably acorns, which are have a pretty high fat content. They, they actually have a pretty good balance of fat, protein, and carbohydrate. Uh, we've eaten quite a few acorns this year. These um, blood clots, I'm just going to trim those. Probably don't need all that blood rendering in there. And then just keep on cubing up fat. So once I finish cubing it, um, you're going to let it get hot on high. I'll turn it down to low and we'll check back in in a couple of hours. All right, it's been about four hours since we uh, left this. So let's have a look. Let some of that water steam out. <coughs> so you can see the ones that are starting to uh, render, they're, they're a little more uh, yellowish, I guess. And these ones here that are white, they're still kind of cooler because they're sitting up on top, but everything's boiling down underneath. Get myself a wooden spoon. Give it a little stir. The meat bits look like they are cooking but they aren't burnt yet and nothing's crispy in here yet so because i'm back in the house and keeping an eye on it crank it back up to high and we'll just let it sit and i ended up only putting in about two thirds of that fat i didn't think the whole thing was going to fit so um, i'll just do this as a one batch and then a second batch later on and probably another four hours later again just stirring this carefully I mean this is boiling grease so I don't want to get splashed or get my finger in there but you can see the fat is coming out nicely we haven't got cracklings developed yet and the pieces that have meat on the meat's not burnt yet it's just cooked um, and there's no steam evaporating off of this so we know that all the water has come out and if you think there's water kind of hiding on the bottom you can give it a little bit of a stir it'll rise to the top and escape and uh, it's looking really good so I'm going to turn this down to low and I'm going to cover it back up and I'll probably check on it once more before bedtime and then keep it on low or if I'm worried about it I'll turn it down to warm and let it sit overnight like that and we'll check it again in the morning let's see where we're at now that this has been sitting all night 
Ooh, this looks good. So this has just been sitting here on warm for about 10 or 12 hours. And all of our fat pieces are rendered down quite small. And we have lots of fat in here, so it's darkening up a little bit. Probably I burnt a little bit of the meat pieces. Let's see, there's one there and it looks pretty dark. Oops. That's okay. So what we're going to do now, a lot of this fat is done. We're going to put it through a screen, we're going to jar it up. And then uh, maybe I'll put it on to low. You're shaking my camera, aren't you? Um, got some kids helping out. And then uh, with the crackling pieces, probably put them in a frying pan and sort of finish them off in there. And it'll render it a little bit more fat and it'll crisp up these crackling pieces real nice. All right. I got this back up warm by turning it to low and leaving it there for about 40 minutes. And all I want to do is take my clean jar with um, a canning funnel and I've got just a uh, strainer that fits in there nicely. And I'm going to fill it with this hot rendered bear fat. Got a couple kids in the background here too. So all this crackling that's caught in the strainer, what I'm gonna do with that is let it drain into this jar and then I'm gonna transfer it to a clean frying pan. And I'll just put it on low and continue to heat it and just kind of crisp it up a little bit. So I'll get the last bit of fat out of it and then I'll probably strain them. And they will be nice and relatively dry and crispy like when you buy pork rinds in the grocery store. So I'll just go grab my frying pan. Okay, so you can see these guys are still draining and I pretty much want to get all the fat out of them that I can. And the rendered fat is usually this golden color when it's um, hot. But here's some that I made in the spring. You can see that it is white when it's cool. And this one's a liquid at room temperature. Now because I'm jarring these guys with the hot fat, once I put the lids on, the lids will set and they'll seal. And I would say, once you've done that, as long as you don't have water mixed in there and your lid seal, that fat should store indefinitely. And I've certainly kept bear fat for uh, months to uh, over a year before without having it spoil. In another video, I'll show the same process for raccoon fat. And I've left raccoon fat in an open jar on my counter for probably three or four weeks, just using a little bit every day, and it also never spoiled. Okay, we're almost full here. We'll just let that drip drain, and then we'll transfer those cracklings into this frying pan. All right, so those are just about done dripping and my jar is pretty much full so these guys go into a pan we'll put that on the stove in a minute get another jar ready maybe a pint jar this time for the next batch and this jar is very hot we we'll put the lid on and we'll just wait for it to set. Set it aside over here. Should seal up. 
Uh, fill into the jar. So this is uh, pretty much your process for rendering the bear fat. Um, lots of people, excuse me, would stop at this stage and not bother with the crackling, but um, we find the crackling to be particularly delicious. And we'll sometimes just mix it with a little bit of maple syrup and walnuts or hazelnuts. Um, or maybe you could use hickories or other wild nuts. And it's like the best dessert that we've had all year just about. So once I get down to the bottom of the jar, I'll get my, to the bottom of my slow cooker, I'll get my oven mitts and I'll just lift it out and pour the last of the fat through. Probably get one more pint jar out of this. I actually prefer to do it in pint jars because a pint jar is about a pound of fat. A pound of fat is about 3,500 calories or 4,000 calories, which is just over a day's worth of calories. Um, and I usually use or aim to use about one a week. So that ends up being one seventh of my um, weekly calories would come from fat, at least a seventh from this pure fat here, plus whatever fats in what I'm cooking. Okay, let's let this one drain. We'll fry this pan up. And turn that up to about medium. And we'll get it rocking. So I've got no water in here. So I'm just going to make sure that I stay on top of this crackling more frequently by keeping it moving so none of it burns to the bottom of the pan. Although you can see there's already a lot of bear fat has come out of this crackling. So we'll just continue to fry this up. We're getting close to the end of the process here. Okay, notice how these guys are really browning up now in the pan. So they're nearing completion. So you just want to keep an eye on them at this point and make sure you don't start to burn them. Some of these meat pieces here have already probably started to burn a little bit. Uh, but most of the crackling pieces look pretty good. You can see how much more fat came out of them since we stopped cooking them in the slow cooker. So we are getting quite a bit more extraction. Uh, but the main thing is you want to get as much of the liquid fat as you can out of these cracklings. So we'll let them go for a few minutes longer and I'll get my strainer set up because we're going to put them through the strainer again. Okay, <clears throat> so these guys have stopped sizzling. They've actually started smoking a little bit, if you can see that smoke. I'm going to take the heat off the pan and scoop out the cracklings. Put them through my strainer again. And these guys are going for quite a while because I want them to finish as dry as possible. Let all that fat drip down into my jar. And that basically completes the process. So I'm going to just keep doing what I showed you with my fat until I've got it all out of my fridge and processed through the slow cooker and into jars and processed into the frying pan and into jars. And then I'll use that bare fat all year long. This is again my 365 days of eating only wild food with my girlfriend Delphine. It's the big wild year and uh, bear fat has definitely made up the bulk of our fat intake this year. So we're very fond of it and uh, we'll continue to use it. Thanks for watching.